Hello, this is Krista Soria, and I am your English 212 Technical Writing Instructor. Today is our very first class session, and today I'm going to be presenting an overview or an introduction to our course. You'll see that I have our uh, Blackboard class shell up and available. We'll be toggling back and forth between these two, um, the PowerPoint presentation and the Blackboard shell, as we begin to learn a little bit more about the class. Today our agenda, we're going to be doing an overview of Blackboard. We're also going to be discussing course communications. And an online course, communications are essential to your success and to ensuring that you stay on top of things and on track with some of your assignments and, and so on. We're also going to be doing a, a very quick overview of your syllabus and also discussing some of the major class assignments as well. So let's begin with our tour of Blackboard. Just a warning to those of you who are watching this session in future years, uh, this is a session that was recorded in the summer of 2012, so the Blackboard page may not look exactly the same, but the basic content will still be there. So right away on the home page, we see this announcement section. I post lots of things to the announcements page, including when assignments are due, um, what's due for any given week of the course. I also will post um, helpful hints or guidelines or general group feedback um, regarding papers and so on onto the announcements page. Further, I also sometimes will post some emails, and this is especially true in the beginning of class. I can actually email from the announcements page, so I can draft an announcement and, and send it in two ways. One is I can paste it here so that you can view it on the announcements page, and the second is I can automatically select it to be emailed to the whole class. So occasionally I will do that throughout the semester. On the left-hand side of the page, you'll see weekly learning units, and this is essentially the structure or the guide of our course. If you open up a weekly learning unit, you'll see it functions much like a textbook. Each weekly learning unit has several different pages, which you can see very quickly at a glance on the left-hand side of the page. Um, you can click on these different pages and you'll see some different content. You might see um, some you know, Word documents or PDFs also attached to the content. You'll also see some assignments as well. And what does an assignment look like? Well, I've just clicked on one. And you'll see up here on the upper left-hand corner, there's a little page with a ruler and a pencil. That's generally the clip art for assignments. All assignments for this course, for the most part, will be submitted on Blackboard, and they'll be submitted using these assignment features. A couple of things with regard to this assignment page. One is you'll sometimes see some text at the top here, or let me go to a different assignment and I'll show you what that looks like. I've also got some text and some files for you to download to view a little bit more information about the assignment or to access the assignment as well. There's a little text box here. You're welcome to type in notes, but I, I actually never sort of receive them or read them, so I encourage you not to use that feature. Instead, what I recommend that you do is you browse your computer to upload a file, and that file would be a Word document, preferably. For this course, I actually don't want PDF documents because I want the ability to more quickly edit on a sentence level or on a letter level, whereas with PDF, I can include um, some little post-it notes, but they're very time consuming and they're not very easy for students to use either for that reason. Um, so browse your computer, submit your file, you'll, you'll attach it and then you'll submit it. It's kind of a two-part process. You have to take both steps to successfully submit your assignment. I do not want you to copy and paste the word text for your assignment and place it in um, this box here. I'd, I'd rather um, because I can't essentially edit that text ever. <laughs> so what you need to do is um, just go ahead and uh, attach a Word document file and then submit it. And that's how you submit an assignment successfully. Pretty easy. The first couple of assignments are worth very few points because I know that sometimes the first couple of attempts at submitting assignments are not always successful for students. So they're worth about 10 points a piece. And they're really just a, a way for me to um, be assured that you know know how to submit an assignment throughout the semester. Also in the weekly learning units, you will find that students have contributed to the course content. 
And this happens, this is actually an assignment that you yourselves will be participating in as well. Um, but you'll see that students are responsible for the material because they typically have their name at the top of the page. Um, here's uh, another example. Um, so you'll see up here that this is conducted or created by a student and um, th this would be the type of information that you'll be also submitting for an assignment that I call the building the course assignment. But any mistakes would be attributed to the student, <laughs> as, although I've tried as much as possible to help all the students to eliminate some of the errors. If you notice errors or links not working, um, you know, please let me know so that I can do my best to um, help that student further by getting rid of those errors errors in their writing. But you'll see those sprinkled throughout the course and it's kind of a great way that students have contributed and have collaborated together to be co-creators of the course, which I think is a really great way to become embedded in learning and to become a little bit more familiar with the actual course content. Also on the left hand side, um, so that really sort of concludes the weekly learning units. You can see all of them here. Um, just a very quick note too that when a week has ended, it will get moved to the bottom of the page. So that's another thing to consider. Um, but you just click on the links and then there you have access to all of the pages, which include information about the course, assignments, um, and so on. Also on the left hand side of the page, you'll see that you can access our syllabus. One of the larger assignments for this course is called the Feasibility Project. And while these assignments, these individual assignments, are sprinkled throughout the weekly learning units, I've also attached them here in the Feasibility folder just to keep them all in one place. You'll see that I also have some examples of um, final reports and proposals in some of the larger assignments that are associated with this project. I'm just opening up one here. Um, so you can see what it looks like. These are great examples. One thing that you'll notice is that I am the audience for all these assignments. And for your assignments, I will not be the audience. Just sort of a, a hint to starting this class. I will never be your audience for any of your assignments. Um, but the audiences here are me, just uh, to protect the anonymity of the actual audience members as they do really exist in real life. I also have some additional materials posted under course materials. I have some nice videos posted. They're all under five minutes in length um, for how to do some really common things in Blackboard. So that's um, another great resource for you. Um, of course, I've got our exams posted and I've got them all posted and available so that you can start them. Um, they're all posted here. Uh, grades, I'll click on it. I won't be able to see it because I'm not a student, but when you click on grades, you'll be able to view the gradebook. I've also posted some chapter summaries. So as you're reading along, you can refer back to the chapter summaries and get some of the major points of each chapter and then also the chapter goals. So by the end of reading these chapters, you should be able to do some of these um, following tasks. Just kind of nice frameworks for the course. And then a few other pieces of information below that I don't really refer to that often. Um, but that's just a very, very quick overview of Blackboard to get you relatively acquainted with it. Moving along. Okay, um, so a couple of pieces of information that are important to know. Um, and let me start. Oh, and I have to. Okay, so communications, let me go back a page. All right, so if you need to contact me in this course, email is by far the best way to do so. There are some times in the semester where I do get a little backed up with emails and assignments. and My response time might be a little bit slower, um, but generally speaking, I respond to all emails within about 48 hours um, and much, much often sooner. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can expect about 48 hours is generally um, probably about average. Um, my cell phone number is also posted. You're welcome to call me or to text me. Just keeping in mind that, you know, good hours of the day to call. It would not be a great idea to call me at like midnight, <laughs> but, but you are welcome to call or send me a text if you like. We can also conduct office hours on eLive or on Skype as well. eLive is a Blackboard system and many of you are familiar with Skype already. And this PowerPoint doesn't look good. Sorry, I just used a new format. I'm realizing everything is getting smushed together. So my apologies for that. 
Um, lectures are recorded for you to view when it's convenient, um, but you should view the recordings essentially when you're prompted to do so, and that's typically before big assignments. And I wouldn't wait until the last minute to view them um, because you know they contain important information about your assignments. So I wouldn't if it, if an assignment is due at midnight, I wouldn't start viewing a session at 11:30. But I would definitely view it several days in advance. That will also give you plenty of time to send me an email if you've got some questions. I will email you frequently, including um, sending you feedback on all of your assignments. I will also request revisions on your feedback, and I typically request that your revisions be submitted within a specific time frame. So, for example, if your assignment is due on Wednesday, I receive it on Wednesday, let's say I grade it and return it back to you by Friday, I will ask that your revisions will typically be due a week from that Friday. So you'll have a full week to take those revisions under consideration. Um, and assignments that are not revised will just retain their original grade. Be sure to keep your email inboxes empty. I don't think that's a problem with Gmail as it used to be a problem with UAE's webmail system, for those of you who remember that. But if you are forwarding your Gmail to a personal email, Yahoo or Hotmail or something like that, just be sure to keep your email inboxes empty so that you can receive emails from me. Generally speaking, if you fail to submit around five assignments in a row, you'll be withdrawn from the course, and that's just to protect your grade. Um, I'll email you first to check in, but if I don't hear from you, then I'll just withdraw you. Um, I, and I should have started on a more positive note by saying, you know, I really do want everybody in this class to be successful. Um, so if something happens to you, I don't need to know the gory details, um, but just let me know in advance so that we can sort of plan for you to have some time away from the class and we'll be able to successfully integrate you back into the class after your situation um, has commenced. And for many people, that might be a loss in the family. It may be the loss of a personal relationship. Um, you know, every semester I have several students who undergo some major life event. And again, while you don't need to share the gory details with me, just letting me know something is happening in my life and I, I just need to step away for a week or two. And can I have a, a one week extension on my assignments? And you know, that's usually pretty fine. It, the worst case scenario is for you to miss class for three or four weeks, not turn anything in, and then come to me at the end of the semester wanting to catch up or wanting to, you know, and at that point, I mean, if your life is in such a crisis that you had to miss class for three or four weeks and now you suddenly need to catch up, your life isn't going to get any better <laughs> by having to cram in three or four weeks of assignments and materials and so on at the end of the semester. So as much as we can plan in advance for those types of things to happen, um, it's just better for you as a student. Um, sometimes student emails don't work and <laughs> I had one semester in particular where I had been, received a student's assignments and I was sending her feedback by email and she had grades in the grade book and uh, unfortunately she wasn't getting any of my feedback so she would just see a grade in the grade book and no feedback and she thought I was the worst instructor ever for just giving her a grade and not letting her know why she got that grade and I don't blame her but she called IT services and sure enough she had not received a single email from me um, or from anybody that semester so um, you know one way to tell if your email is not functioning is if you have grades in Blackboard but you haven't gotten any feedback from me. Um, additionally, if you see some things that look like emails posted in the announcement section, but you did not receive that email in your inbox, that's another sign that something is going on with your email. If that's the case, just please let me know as soon as possible. Generally speaking, um, I request that students do not email me assignments. Um, there are some exceptions. So one is if you use a, a one free pass, I'll discuss this a little bit more in a few slides, but essentially everyone has the opportunity for one assignment to request an extension of the due date for that assignment. Um, when assignments are due on Blackboard, I've got a timer set so that they automatically disappear. So if an assignment is due at 11.55 p.m. on Sunday, at 11.56 you will no longer be able to view that assignment on Blackboard. So if you're submitting something a week late, you can't do it on Blackboard because no assignment feature exists for it, you have to email me that assignment. Another exception is when you return a revision to me. Um, so if you're revising a paper, you're going to email that to me because, again, the assignment won't be on Blackboard any longer. Finally, another exception, I didn't note this on here, is that I've got a few assignments that are sort of web-based. So one is to create a survey 
and you'll email that survey to me instead of, um, and you'll be emailing me a survey link actually instead of, um, you know, submitting anything on Blackboard. There are um, two functions on the assignment screens. Um, you know, you have to upload your assignment and submit it. So I hope I made that very clear when it comes to assignment submission. Assignments are due at 11.55 p.m., typically on a Sunday. And I've assigned those on Sundays because I know that people in this class tend to work full time or have very busy part time jobs or family responsibilities or other responsibilities. Um, so, um, Assignments will always be due at 11.55 p.m. on Sunday. The big exception to that is during finals week, um, I need your assignments to be submitted on, on Thursday. So that's um, typically the, the big exception. You'll know that you've successfully submitted an assignment when you see a green exclamation point in the gradebook. And further, you'll know that I'm grading those particular assignments when you see a, a class average for the grade. Going to some of the syllabus information, um, Mike Markle's Technical Communication is our required text for the course. It's the 9th edition. You don't need the 10th edition, at least of summer 2012. That could change in the future. Um, and the current APA manual is the 6th edition for the APA manual. And again, that could change in the future, so I'm adding that caveat to my presentation. Um, the big thing I want to emphasize is that I'm really here to help you be successful. I have been a student for forever. <laughs> I've never really quit going to college. I've gone to college, I've gotten a couple of master's degrees, and now I'm working on my doctorate degree. And I've, I know what it's like to juggle all of those responsibilities. And trust me, I'm, I'm not here to be the type of professor who's, you know, weeding people out or, you know, is designing my course so that the most number of people fail. <laughs> I'm really here to help you meet your goals in this course, which for all of you should be to, you know, get your money's worth, to pass the class, and to move on with your lives. And so um, I'm here to help you be successful in whatever form that might take. So, you know, think about me as an ally. You know, if there's things that I can do to improve your course experience, of course I want to know that as well. Um, one of the things I tend to do to improve the class experience is to change the syllabus or the class schedule only to make students' lives a better, <laughs> better essentially. Um, not to make your life more miserable. So if I change the syllabus, it won't be, you know, that assignment that was due in two weeks, it's now due tomorrow. <laughs> it would be that assignment that's due this weekend, you have four extra days to submit it. So that's the type of thing that I typically do with, with syllabus and class changes. Additionally, um, I have a policy I can't award incompletes for this class. As an adjunct faculty, my employment is not guaranteed every semester, so I may not be available to grade and to, to finish your incomplete for you. I also recommend that you check your email frequently. My policy for late work is you do receive one free pass, which is essentially a one-week extension. If I receive late work outside of the free pass, it's going to receive about half the points that it was worth and you won't receive any feedback on it. Assignments are always due at 11.55 p.m. on Sunday night, so that's kind of the standard rule. And of course, you can check out the syllabus for assignment due dates and point values. There's several bigger assignments for this course that are worth the most amount of points. Those are quizzes, a few book assignments, and the feasibility um, assignments, which are sort of, they, they begin at the beginning of the semester, and they run all the way through the end of the semester. And those account for the most amount of points for the class. Um, an online portfolio, and then an assignment that I've called Building the Class, which as I showed you earlier is when students contribute um, to the, the course content. The feasibility assignment is the largest assignment, and it's a research report. It answers the question, how feasible is it to do something? And that something could be, how feasible is it to start a business? And you know, you'll have to be specific about what that business will be. But how feasible is it to build a bridge across the Knick arm? You know, those are very general um, questions, but that's essentially the goal of this particular assignment. Most of you have done feasibility studies before, but very informally. So every semester that you wish to register for classes, for example, you might conduct a feasibility study in which you ask yourself, is it feasible for me to register and you know be a full-time student or a part-time student this semester? And you establish some criteria questions to help you get at how feasible it is to enroll in classes. 
So um, you might ask yourself, well, can I afford it? <laughs> can I pay my tuition? Can I buy my books? Um, will I have enough time after my you know, full-time job? Um, will somebody take care of my kids when I'm in school? You know, all these questions that you're asking yourself, these all help you to derive the larger answer of, is it feasible to do something? The feasibility project for this course includes all of those um, little sub-bullet points that you see there, all of those components, and um, that's essentially what, what makes up the feasibility assignment as a whole. The online portfolio is something that you'll build and create throughout the entire semester. I ask that you choose a free website builder. You're never going to have to pay for extra things in this class. Um, and also to have fun with this assignment, to use it as a great way to express yourself in a safe online environment. Students will never be required to use their real names. You are welcome to use a pseudonym if you don't wish to reveal your true identity. You'll never be asked to upload things that you're not comfortable with uploading, including your resume if you feel as though you, know, you don't want your address online or, or what have you. Um, but I do, you know, it, technical writing has truly evolved. Um, technical writing textbooks 15 or 20 years ago didn't have any mention of email. <laughs> they certainly didn't have any mention of PowerPoints or how to create a website. <laughs> so technical writing has certainly evolved and changed. Um, because technical communication has changed in general and now we're really moving into being a very web-based society so I want you to master some of those skills. Um, additionally the building the course assignment is one in which you can choose your topic and choose how you'd like to teach it to your class and I encourage you to have fun with that one as well. Generally speaking it's my I've got sort of two overriding philosophies for this course. One is that writing is a process. It's a developmental process that occurs over time. You will never complete an assignment 100% perfect the very first time around. Good writing is truly collaborative writing. Uh, case in point, um, I have published, um, I think, around 12 academic articles at this point. If you type my name in Google Scholar, you'll see a couple of those articles are actually in print right now, and they're available for review. Um, not all are, but quite a few are there. And I can tell you that with that process, one, I typically write collaboratively. So I usually have a co-author. And when we write a paper, that might take a month or two to write to do the analysis of the data and to write up the results. And you know that it does, it just takes time. Um, when we submit it for peer review in these academic journals, we um, frequently get a response back stating, you know, we like your paper, but we need you to make the following revision. So we make all those revisions, which could take an extra two or three weeks <laughs> to complete. Um, and, and by the time it's all published and everybody thinks everything is perfect, you know, and we've got a copy editor comes in at the end, <laughs> right before it's ready to be published. And the whole process can sometimes take nine months to a year. And, you know, and that's truly a, the example of the writing process. So good writing is collaborative and it and requires revisions and it's developmental. It's something that happens over time. So when I send you revisions and feedback, the best way to learn from them is to actually do them. <laughs> so I do encourage you to complete the revisions that I have suggested. Um, one thing with the revisions is I tend to use track changes in Word and I encourage you to not to just don't simply accept the changes because sometimes I'll write out a comment I'll say something like good writing here Stephanie <laughs> and if you accept that that is integrated into your memo and of course it, it just doesn't look, look good. Um, students who kind of generally speaking follow my recommended revisions will always have higher grades the extra effort of taking the time to do the revisions will pay off in more ways than one, more than just your grade. You'll also just learn how to become a better writer. Um, and this is a very important point that I wish to focus on for a few minutes. Um, I, you know, the first few assignments are worth very few points, like 10 points, 15 points, 20 points, out of over a thousand points for this class. And, you know, students, as I mentioned, will never do a, a perfect job the first time around. So if you get a failing grade the first paper or two or three or four, please don't be discouraged. I encourage you to make the revisions that I suggest to turn it back in and you'll get a lot higher points. And there's a few more, you know, notes here. One is if you receive something like a four out of ten or a three out of ten, you know, you've really only lost 
seven points out of over 14, 1,400 points for this semester, or 1,300 points, whatever it is in the given semester. That's not a big deal. <laughs> it doesn't affect your final grade substantially, right? If you, you know, got 100 out of 200, okay, that might start to affect your final grade, but honestly, losing seven points is not a big deal. Um, you know, secondly, I, you know, and for those students too who are especially accustomed to receiving B's or A's for their grades, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to not be stressed out about these low grades and to make the revisions and submit them in and you will earn higher points. So just a couple of notes there with the, the grading system. You might not be accustomed to receiving such a low grade. Um, everybody, including your mother and your grandmother, might have told you that, you know, you're the best writer ever. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, um, I'm here to help you become a better writer. And so sometimes I grade low and I that's a mean that means of encouraging you to make the revisions that I have recommended and to um, to resubmit for higher points. So that concludes my very first video recorded session. Uh, if you have any questions, please do let me know. This is a great time for you to get integrated to the course, to get accustomed to learning in this type of environment. Um, so please let me know if you've got questions. Definitely happy to help you out. I'm definitely here to um, help you be as successful as possible. So thanks so much for viewing the session. I hope you have a great morning or afternoon or evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Thanks so much.